If you want to beat the stock market but don't want to try time in the next crash, I've got a strategy you're going to love. Investing in stock sectors around business cycle phases has been shown to boost returns by up to 5% annually, and you don't need to be a numbers nerd like me to do it. We're talking business cycle investing today on Let's Talk Money. Beat that. Make money. Make your money work for Creating you. the financial future you deserve. Let's Talk Money. Joseph Hogue with the Let's Talk Money channel here on YouTube. I want to send a special shout out to everyone in the community. Thank you for taking a part of your day to be here. If you're not part of that community yet, just click that little red subscribe button. It's free and you'll never miss an episode. A lot of you have asked about the stock sectors, those segments of the economy that you hear so much about, but that kind of get drowned out in favor of stock picking on most investing channels. That's why I'm so excited to make this video because understanding these 11 stock sectors can lead to a powerful investing strategy called business cycle investing. Not only will the business cycle investing help you grow your portfolio during a bull market, it'll help you protect your money in a bear market. In fact, just small tweaks to your investments like the ones I'm going to show you today have been shown to boost total returns between 3 to 5% annually over the long term according to, to 50 years of data collected by Oppenheimer funds. Even better though, by protecting your investments in a stock market crash, you're less likely to freak out and make those bad investing decisions that ruin portfolios. Now that's something even buy and hold long term investors can appreciate. I'm going to start off by describing the business cycle and showing you how to follow the business cycle phases without being an economist or watching the news 24 7. I'll then walk you through those 11 stock sectors, describing the pros and cons of each. Finally, I'm going to reveal which of these stock sectors do best during each phase of the business cycle to give you an investing strategy easy enough for beginners, but that beats the pros. Now, the business cycle is just the general pattern of how profits and the economy interact. It's that natural process of everything that goes into the economy like interest rates, employment, spending and wages and how this influences corporate earnings. Now, One of the most important things I want you to get from this video is that the business cycle is not the bull market or the bear market in stocks. It's not the same as the stock market cycle. You know, For example, the business cycle turned downward in 2015 and, and while it did coincide with a negative year for stocks, it wasn't the big stock market crash that investors think about when they hear a recession. The business cycle tends to run between 3 to 5 years from early cycle to recession and we'll go over each of these phases in more detail looking at each and how to invest. Now, a lot of this is influenced by the government and ironically it's the government's programs to smooth out the business cycle that really create those ups and downs. The reason the business cycle is so important for investors is because you actually can follow the cycle and use it to make better investing decisions. In contrast to the stock market, which gives absolutely no consistent clues before its weakness, uh, there are defined metrics that you can watch out for and forecast changes in the business cycle. Now, these changes influence sales and earnings for industries differently, so investing according to these four business cycle phases can help you not only protect your money from stock market weakness, but even add return to your portfolio. Now, I want to run through each of these business cycle phases briefly here to give you a sense for why they happen and what you can watch for. Then I'll show you actual research proving which assets and which stocks do best in each phase. Now, As I write up this video, we're actually in those later stages, so we'll start there, but understand this is a cycle, so it flows in a loop. In that late stage of the business cycle, the economy is growing pretty steadily. Economic growth might slow a little from the faster growth that we see in previous phases, but it's still humming along pretty nicely. Because unemployment has been falling though, we start to see wages increase as employers hunt for those qualified workers. Uh, those higher wages might start to show up in lower profit margins, but it's not yet hurting earnings too much. Because the economy is doing really well, the Federal Reserve is increasing rates or at least not cutting them. The government doesn't have any real pressure to, to launch big spending plans to stimulate the economy. So over the past year, we saw that the Fed was increasing rates. Unemployment is down to about 3.6% and employers are starting to complain about worker shortages. Wage growth around 3% has started to choke off profit margins a little, so, so we're definitely in this latter stage in the cycle in mid-2019. Now, Eventually, the higher wages and inflation hits corporate profits enough that, that companies start to lay off workers. Lenders start to tighten credit requirements because they fear more defaults in a potential recession. Of course, this all works to send us into a recession because lending dries up, rising unemployment means lower consumer spending, which, which leads to more layoffs and an economic slowdown. Trying to turn it all around, the Federal Reserve cuts interest rates and the government starts talking about stimulus spending like infrastructure and other programs. With lower interest rates and government stimulus, companies and consumers start borrowing again in that early stage. 
manufacturing and employment starts to pick up, this boosts consumer spending and we get a bump in corporate profits. As the economy moves from that early stage to the mid phase though, maybe the Fed keeps interest rates steady and government stimulus starts to come to an end. The economy is still growing, but that growth starts to slow. Uh, unemployment has come down quite a bit, so employers are out of that pool of cheap labor that just wanted to get back to work after a recession. Now it's at this point that profits are starting to peak and companies run out of good ways to reinvest that cash flow. So they end up turning to share buybacks for that last artificial boost to profits per share. And this is where it starts all over again. Now I understand all this economic lingo can be intimidating at first, but there really are just a few things that you need to watch for to, to follow the business cycle. First is unemployment and wages. Is unemployment uh, so low that it's leading to higher wages that might decrease corporate profits? Now, I know everybody likes a fatter paycheck and I'm not saying that higher wages are bad from a worker's perspective. To an investor though, this is something else. Higher wages are fine if productivity goes up as well, but often this just means higher expenses and lower margins for a company and that's going to mean lower earnings growth, which earnings are that ultimate goal for investors. The other side of this question, of course, is when unemployment is high and wage growth is lower, so in a recession when companies can find all the labor that they need and turn that into higher profits. Now another factor to watch for is that stimulus from the Federal Reserve and from the government. Is the Fed cutting rates or increasing them? And what's the probability of some big spending program from Congress? Finally, you can also look into the credit market and whether banks are tightening or loosing requirements for new loans. Now there's a monthly survey put out by the Fed that tracks this, uh, asking loan officers about their credit requirements, so it's a great resource that you can follow. Now while the business cycle usually hits all four of these phases, it doesn't necessarily have to and there are times when it jumps a few in the cycle. A good example of this was the tax cuts in 2018. Now everything was pointing to a very late stage business cycle and maybe even dipping into recession. The Federal Reserve was hiking rates and unemployment had bottomed. Then we lower the corporate tax rate by double digits and individual rates got cut too. Now I'm not going to argue whether this was a good or a bad thing or who got the most benefit, but it was undeniably government stimulus. Corporate earnings surged by 24% in 2018, which pushed us back into that mid or even early phase of the business cycle. Now I want to talk about which assets and which stock sectors do best in each of these business cycle phases. I'll be sharing research by Fidelity that measured the return to each stock sector as well as generally how well stocks, bonds, and real estate did during each phase. First though, I want to get your opinion on something. What phase of the business cycle do you think that we're in right now? And this video is going to stay on the channel for years, so I want to use this as a real gauge, an opinion poll as for the following the business cycle. Which phase are we in? So scroll down and let us know in the comments below the video. Now we'll look at each of the 11 stock sectors and how to invest for business cycle phases next, but first let's take a broader look at the asset classes, so stocks, bonds, and real estate. Now each reacts differently to the business cycle, so just adjusting your portfolio and these assets can help you protect your money and really hit those higher returns. Of course, stocks are the more volatile of the three assets and tend to show some weakness in that late stage of the business cycle. The return on the S&P 500 index was actually negative in 2018 on that December sell-off and we saw a 7% plunge in May, so definitely some weakness and volatility. Uh, stocks can crash hard in the recession but generally bounce back fast in that early and the mid-cycle phases. Bonds are your traditional safety investment so they're not quite as volatile as stocks. Uh, they might underperform stocks in that early and mid-cycle but, but then start to look more attractive in the late cycle when stocks wobble. When bonds really shine is when those stock prices are falling and the Fed is cutting interest rates. Fixed income actually beat the stock market last year and I made over 9% on my peer-to-peer -peer lending portfolio, which is kind of a fixed income investment. Now real estate is another great way to diversify your portfolio from these violent ups and downs you get from stocks in that business cycle. Real estate tends to rise with inflation whereas higher prices drag down bond values, so it's a good investment in that mid and late stage phases. A commercial real estate is weaker in that recession stage but bounces right back in that early phase after falling interest rates. Now looking at the individual stock sectors is where you really start to use the business cycle to your advantage. Fidelity measured the average returns for each sector as well as how often each sector outperformed during a specific phase. Quick refresher though, the sectors are just groupings of businesses according to general product category. So there are 10 or 11 sectors depending on whether you include aerospace and with industrials or, or breakout real estate in, in its own sector. Within each sector you see different industries, groupings of companies that sell a similar product. So within financials here you have industries like banking, insurance, and investment management. 
Within healthcare, you might have uh, industries like pharmaceuticals, biotech, medical services, and equipment. Now, following these sectors is important because each reacts a little differently to the business cycle and those economic factors. For example, consumer discretionary does really well when people are going back to work in that early stage of the recovery because, because spending increases on those types of products like hotels, restaurants, and cars. Conversely, this is one of the hardest hits in a recession because people cut back here first when unemployment rises. So Fidelity studied the average returns on each sector during each business cycle phase going back to 1962. Now that's the number on the left side of this chart. It also studied the hit rate for each sector, shown on the right here. Uh, the hit rate is just the percentage that the sector produced a positive return during that business cycle phase over the decades studied. So let's use the chart here for the early stage as an example, and then we'll look at the sectors and at the other phases. So we see that the average return in the consumer discretionary sector was just under 15% during that early stage. Makes sense, the economy is rebounding, people are enthusiastic about getting jobs and being able to spend more money. The hit rate, the little black diamond, is at 100% for discretionary, meaning it produced a positive return during every single early phase back to 1962. By contrast, companies in the energy sector posted an average return of negative 5% during this stage, and only a positive return 30% of the time. Following the chart, you see the best sectors for the early stage of an economic recovery are real estate, financials, consumer discretionary, and industrials. So as the business cycle evolves into that mid-phase, so strengthening economy, uh, higher profits, fiscal and monetary stimulus starts to come off, here we see the technology, telecom, and healthcare start to outperform, while materials, utilities, and consumer discretionary are underperforming. One thing to notice here, though, is that the hit rate is stuck around 50% for most of these sectors. That means it was really only about a 50-50 on whether the sector would produce a positive return during that phase. One way to think of this hit rate measure is the reliability or the confidence that you have that a sector's average is going to come out. So whereas we saw very high hit rates of 90% to 100% for consumer discretionary and industrials in that early stage graphic, meaning that you can be confident that the returns are going to be positive, it's harder to say that about the sectors in the mid-stage of the cycle. Now, as the economy starts to wobble a little bit into that lat later stage of the business cycle, you start to see some of these safety sectors outperform. You've got utilities, consumer staples, and healthcare all doing really well. You've got energy outperforming because prices keep up with that inflation. Uh, the hit rate is pretty good on a lot of these, between 70% to 85% for those outperformers, so you have a little bit more confidence that they'll do well during this stage. Now, on the other side, you start to see these economically sensitive stock sectors start to break down. The worst performers here are the consumer discretionary and technology companies. Uh, a lot of this has to do with investor sentiment, so maybe the actual economy hasn't yet broken to the downside and into that recession, but investors are seeing it coming and selling out of these cyclical stocks. Now, when the business cycle does move into that recession stage, you see the safety sectors really assert themselves with almost double-digit returns in consumer staples and utilities. You've also got healthcare outperforming, and that hit rate of these first three is 70% or higher, so a good level of confidence. Now, here during the recession, real estate, technology, and industrials tend to underperform. Notice though that the hit rate on, on a lot of these is fairly low, so it can go one way or the other. So if you put all this together, it can give you an idea of positioning your portfolio to be ready for each of these stages. For example, you might aggressively buy stocks of a consumer discretionary company ahead of the early stage recovery, but then not add to your position as you move into that mid or other stages. Now here I've used buy, hold, and sell, but that doesn't necessarily mean that you have to sell out of your favorite companies or stocks. Another idea would be to just putting your new investments into these sectors where there's a buy and then sitting tight on those other stages. So business cycle investing isn't about time in the market. It's about being strategic with how you invest your money. Long-term investors might not want to sell out of their sectors, but you can use this as a guide for investing new money each month. I love this strategy and used it in my own portfolio. Uh, investing in stock sectors around the business cycle phases. It helps me shift out of the risk before a potential bear market and take advantage of those natural ups and downs in the different sectors. If you want to see how I pick forever stocks, ones you can hold for decades, click on the video to the right where I explain the universal forces that are driving stocks. Don't forget to join the Let's Talk Money community by tapping that subscribe button so you won't miss a single episode.